Now we've appointed a man that a great many of you know, Don Hollenbeck, as general narrator in charge of subscribers. And he's going to tell you from time to time what tricks they're up to, and he's going to start today by telling you, explaining why the pin boy may soon join the Iceman as a vanishing American institution, Mr. Hollenbeck. Thank you, Mr. Cook. This game has been around a long time, some 6,000 years. In Pharaoh's Egypt, faithful temple goers went bowling to expiate their sins. When our own country was getting underway, we cleared space for house and pasture, and a lot of settlements also found room for bowling. In Peter Stuyvesant's New Amsterdam, they labeled that clearing Bowling Green. But the idea of bowling is still the same today. You knock them down and knock them down again. But the game itself is a great deal different. Today's alleys are carefully built of maple and pine to exact specifications. 60 feet from foul line to head pin with no more than half an inch of variation permitted. That's a tolerance of less than seven parts in 10,000. We bowl with true balanced bowling balls against precision made pins. 20 million active bowlers keep some 60,000 alleys rumbling every day. There have been a lot of changes in the game, but the biggest change of all began not so very long ago. Watch the pin. A back-breaking, monotonous job setting them up. Ten pins, each one on spot. Do it fast, let's go, pay us by the game. Besides, no one out for sport likes to be kept waiting for his turn. Come on, come on, set him up. Except for the pin boy, bowling is a great sport for everyone. The most popular indoor sport we have, enjoyed by every member of the family. Now, in hundreds of alleys across the country, the one tiresome thing about it, the job of picking them up and setting them up gets itself done automatically. You know the aim in bowling, knock down all 10 pins in two tries, in one if you can, almost except for that number 10 pin in the corner. The automatic pin spotter lifts it out of the way, sweeps away the dead wood, sets the remaining pin back exactly where it was, even when it's been moved off spot. Ready for the second ball. And once the second ball is thrown, the machine puts down a full set of 10 pins, all exactly placed, ready and waiting for the next bowler to knock them down. There's a lift for every pin, and as the standing pins are lifted, the pindicator flashes their numbers, the sweep bar clears the alley, then the remaining pins are set back for the second try. The pit floor is an endless moving belt. The ball, watch it, rolls through the gate, is picked up on a lifting belt and returned through a cleaning cloth. The pins are swept onto the same revolving pit floor. Pinwheel catches them, rides them up to the distributor, a sort of trombone mechanism, an automatic feeder that drops a full count of pins into the spotting cups. A full count, always ready for the next setup. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. That's it. The remaining pins are held in reserve. All this goes on while the game goes on without any interruption. Ten pins in the alley, ten pins in the cups. As soon as the spotting cups lower a setup and withdraw, it's feeding time again. And 
this is the one feeding schedule that is always kept. The brain of the automatic pin spotter makes sure of that. Latch relays and table cams. Timer tubes and motor contacts. They have been designed to give the kind of service that helps make bowling everybody's sport. All right, pin spotter, set them up.